सोलर एंड हाइड्रोजन फॉर एनर्जी सो माई मैसेज इज स्टार्ट टूडे कंजर्व एनर्जी सब्सटीट्यूट बाय सोलर एंड हाइड्रोजन सेव मनी स्टे मोस्ट कॉम्पिटेटिव and the last thing i want to tell to you whole of my presentation you must have seen it is in green and blue cover green stands for earth and blue stands for ocean water these are the two things which are going to ensure our survival let us care for mother earth thank you very much thank you very much okay bye thank you to he has a wide experience he has experience of 17 years in hydroelectric projects management construction and observation and operations he also have experience of 4 years in design for hydroelectric projects and solar projects now i would request engineer himanshu sha to present his presentation we cannot hear you we cannot hear you we are not able to hear you please unmute yourself i would request host to please mute the video Mr. Saha, you are getting an option to unmute yourself. Kindly unmute yourself. Now it is clear. Am I yes, audible? Sir. Now, yes, sir. Yes, we can. Thank you, sir. I would like to thanks organizer, I E I. Okay, I unmute. Chairman. चेयरमैन आई आई राजमनी सर संदीप अंडा सर मॉडरेटर प्रदीप सर पार्टिसिपेंट्स डिस्टिंग्विस्ड गेस्ट इन दिस वेबिनार एंड मेकिंग दिस वर्ल्ड ए बेटर प्लेस बाय कंट्रीब्यूटिंग टुवर्ड्स सस्टेनेबल रिन्यूअल एनर्जी डेवलपमेंट दिस इज माय शॉर्ट प्रेजेंटेशन please make it full screen let me is it okay sir at the right bottom corner you will find one yes. cup symbol yes right sir it is okay yeah yes it is okay <laughs> uh first few slides for my company nhpc is a pioneer in the development of hydropower in india concept to commissioning expertise across all domains in the hydropower sector diversified into solar floating solar and wind power schedule a listed company with an authorized share capital of rupees 15000 crore 24 power station uh, currently operation uh, and one uh, wind plant uh, and one solar plant total generating capacity installed capacity you can say 7071 megawatt and total employee strength is more than 5000 annual turnover around uh, 8500 crore and this is the road map of 5 50000 megawatt plants at presently 
4,934 megawatt capacity. Presently, six number side power projects under active cons construction, and uh, 5,945 megawatt capacity hydro power projects awaiting clearance, and 1,130 megawatt capacity under survey and investigation. Working on concept plan to become a 50,000 megawatt in international hydro power company by securing renewable energy projects at feasible location, Pan India and abroad. And uh, regarding solar power, 8,000 capacity solar plants uh, has huge plans of solar power development, especially floating solar in Odisha, Telangana, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and West Bengal. Has signed MAU with various state governments for development of solar power projects. Ultra mega solar power plants are in pipeline at Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan. Has signed MAU with Kerala Power Ministry for development of wind power projects in Kerala with 72 megawatt Agali wind power project in the first instance has plans to develop more hydro and solar power projects at feasible location in Tamil Nadu also. Next, sustainable development is a kind of development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. Sustainable development is not possible without Sustainable energy. Sustainable energy is the golden thread that connects economic growth and environment. The main objective is to advance economic development, improve energy security, improve access to energy, and mitigate climate change. This is where renewable energy plays an important role. I am going to say that in remote places, only the renewable energy can access the energy to people there. Next. This is the India versus uh, world scenario. Uh, country China is uh, almost 10.06 gigatons uh, emitting uh, carbon emission and United States 5.41, India 2.65, and Russian Federation is 1.71 uh, gigaton. And this is the uh, graphical representation. You can see most of the ACS countries are the more uh, contributing the carbon emission by this region. India is the world's third largest carbon emitter behind China and the United States, India can continue to deploy solar farms, leveraging its leadership of the International Solar Alliance to displace coal and clean up its smog choked cities. India is the only country, G20 nation, that is on track to meet the climate change mitigation. Right. This is the world electricity brief overview. China is generating uh, 7,480 terawatt hour units. United States 4,385. India 1,614. Russian Federation 1,122. And this is the graphical representation. Uh, you can see we are here 2020, uh, our uh, energy is dominating mm, coal, coal related and gas, uh, solar and all that is uh, uh, upcoming and uh, 2050 you can see the scenario, uh, right side uh, the graphical representation is showing that total energy coal uh, 38 percent and uh, gas 23 hydro 19 nuclear 10 solar wind 7 and oil is 3 percent and this is the indian scenario indian 
So now the electricity sector India has installed capacity of approximately 370 gigawatt out of 373 gigawatt installed capacity. Share of renewable energy is around 36 percent. Fossil fuel domination. India's energy sector is vastly dominated by fossil fuels, in particular coal, which produces about three quarter of the country's electricity. Policy and action plans with increasing prices of fossil fuel and increasing emphasis on clean energy and sustainable climate commitments. The government of India has undertaken various policies, program, and action plans on climate mitigation and adoption. Emission reduction strategies. Given that India emits 4.1 percent global emission, immediate steps. towards emission reduction and adoption to climate change impacts are the our this is the graphical representation of renewable energy break up wind power is almost 38264 megawatt bio power 10314 megawatt solar power Is thirty-six thousand three hundred seventeen megawatt, megawatt, and the total generation is eighty-nine eighty-nine thousand six thirty-five megawatt. Is almost thirty-six uh, percent of uh, total energy, and this is the uh, graphical representation, which also uh, shows that uh, in two thousand twenty, still fossil fuel. and coal is dominating in india energy sector and uh, nuclear hydro wind is, uh, is very less compared to coal and solar India's taken necessary steps so that economic growth is compatible with low carbon and climate resilient pathways. In 2013, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change created a mechanism for intended nationally determined contribution to be submitted by participant countries. India submitted its. INDC to the UNFCCC in October 2015 committing to cut emission intensity of GDP by 33 to 35% by 2030 from 2005 levels it was estimated that india would need at least 2.5 trillion us dollar to achieve its 2015 to 2030 goals this is the uh, greenhouse gas effect already my uh, co panelist discussed uh, i'll take very uh, far now vast majority of anthropogenic uh, carbon dioxide emission come from combustion of fossil fuels principally coal petroleum and natural gas greenhouse gases can affect the earth's energy balance over a long period increase in anthropogenic greenhouse gas concentration has caused most of the increases in global average temperatures thereby leading to global warming this is why as responsible world citizens countries must adopt sustainable development approach the main objective is to advance economic development improve energy security improve access to energy and mitigate climate change and this is where renewable energy plays an important role this is the renewable energy has start playing important role for augmentation of grid power providing energy access reducing consumption of fossil fuel and helping to pursue its low carbon development path renewable 
source of energy such as those derived from wind sun and waves are presenting themselves as a viable eco friendly option to meet the world's energy needs carbon dioxide emissions mainly contribute uh, from natural gas point 6 to 2 pounds of carbon dioxide emission per kilowatt hour coal it is 1.4 and 3.6 pounds uh, of carbon dioxide emission per uh, kilowatt hour wind is 0.02 and 0.04 pounds of carbon dioxide and solar 0.07 and 0.2 pounds of carbon dioxide hydro power 0.1 and 0.5 pounds of carbon dioxide geothermal 0.1 and 0.2 pounds of carbon dioxide from here we can see the how the renewable energy is needed at this juncture initiative and goals nhpc being a central public sector enterprises has an important role to play in the government's agenda of climate mitigation strategies nhpc will contribute to india's plans to have a rapid and global transition into renewable energy technologies to achieve sustainable growth and avoid catastrophic climate change with growing demands and advancing technologies nhpc position itself to be harbinger of growth and as forward into other forms of renewable energy deployment is especially solar and wind nhpc will be part of the growth of story of india's plans in attaining 175 gigawatt of renewable energy which would consist of 100 gigawatt from solar energy 10 gigawatt from biomass 60 gigawatt from wind power and 5 gigawatt from small hydro power plants by the year 2022 sustainable energy main barriers this is the few observations industry driven competitive solar tariff is one of the main challenges sustainable challenges uh, uh, main challenges as it stop to new low tariff of rupees uh, 2 rupees uh, next point is the discount phase directly impacts the credibility of renewable energy now it is the discount phase we know everything about discounts how they are performing and uh, next point is dishonoring of existing tps by the discoms uh, next point is to standard technical specification and standard bidding documents followed across the country thereby leading to lots of price variation as to what is covered under epc contracts in adequate grid evaluation infrastructure national grid development plan needs to be formulated as a policy decision implementation of must run status for renewable energy power plant must be strictly ensured load shedding is a common phenomenon nowadays initiative goals and future plans 2000 megawatt solar projects have already been awarded to the developers as an intermediary procurer and to be commissioned by march 2022 nhpc has adopted new and emerging technologies which includes plans for development of 1 gigawatt of floating solar in odisha telangana and kerala such huge development will create indirect jobs and livelihood opportunities in the region where the project will be developed NHPC believe in inclusive growth of the communities in and around the project areas and has contributed in a huge way through its CSR activities. NHPC has a coordinated response in the fight against uh, carbon dioxide emissions, reduction of waste by transitioning into renewable energy technologies. future plans nhpc is also open to exploring 
non conventional sources like geothermal and tidal wave energy which are at nascent stage of development at present nhpc has one solar power station of 50 megawatt under operation in tamil nadu and one wind power 50 megawatt capacity in rajasthan nhpc has huge plans to develop around 5 gigawatt in the next few years with floating solar alone being planned for 1 gigawatt in odisha and telangana nhpc adopts the market based clean development mechanism strategies in line with the kyoto protocol cdm allows emission reduction projects in developing countries to warrant certified emission reduction credit each equivalent to 1 ton of carbon dioxide thank you Thank you, Engineer Imanshu Shah. Yes. Now our next panelist is Engineer R P Desh Pandey. Engineer R P Desh Pandey is among the senior most and widely respected personality in Indian capacitor industry. I think you can hear me. Am I audible? Am I audible? Okay. Uh, Engineer Desh Pandey, he has some uh, some of the uh, achievements of him is um, he has nurtured the capacitor industry in India throughout his career. Engineer Desh Pandey has pioneered the development of many capacitor products, technologies, process. and release applications his first book capacitors technology and trends published in 2012 filled up a crucial knowledge gap in capacitor some of the his books are published by macro hills in india with international editions from usa uh, engineer des pande is fellow in fellow from institution of engineers india and an electrical engineer graduate from iit bombay In 1966, I would, now I would request Dean Desh Pandey to present his presentation. Thank you all. Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. So it was nice to hear all these uh, excellent speeches so far. I am thankful to the Institute of Engineers, Local Center of Faridabad, and Dr. Rajpal to give me an opportunity to speak on this occasion. The role of renewable energies is cannot be overemphasized, as you have seen from lectures so far. The if you consider the safety aspects of the energy sources. First is the greenhouse gas emission, which you have very much speaking about today, and that is coal, oil, and natural gas. They have very high amount of greenhouse gas emissions. Apart from SPMs, you may get there. And another thing you find is the death rate from accidents and those connected with air pollution. As you come to hydropower, wind, or solar energy, you find the death rates are almost nil. And so also your greenhouse gas emissions are also absolutely low, almost nil. About a little over ten years back, we simply could not think of wind or solar as a viable alternative to fossil fuels. But over the years, we have come to a situation where the prices of both of these alternatives wind energies have been falling down drastically and today both solar as well as wind are much lower than any fossil fuel power and it is quite likely that this will still go down this is seems to be a very rosy picture but there is one lack here that is this Sources will produce power when they can, 
then the positions are favorable to them, not when we want them. The result is we have to have a stock of power, a storage of power for use for use when we want it. And because of this requirement, today energy storage has become a major industry in the world. The, when we think of energy storage, the first thing that comes to our mind is the batteries. Of course, there are batteries of various kinds today. And the last couple of decades have seen a huge improvement in batteries, the cost coming down. Because once upon the even, over time, even the batteries were not affordable, they were quite, quite costly. But then the battery costs have also come down to the level when we can afford them now. And from vehicles, they have even come down to a level where we can use them for storage of energy at a grid level. In India, we have got our first battery level storage project in February 19 in New Delhi. But one thing you see in common, if you hear there we have some battery systems in Australia. There are other large, and among them, some of them are world's best, uh, biggest factory, uh, sorry, world's biggest uh, systems going to 200 megawatts in pipeline. One thing we find here is that all the systems, they are capable of storing between one to four hours of backup energy which is not sufficient for us. Whereas what we require is, if we have used 100% renewable energy, then you should be able to get power for full 24 hours from the storage systems or whatever system you use. Batteries and ultra capacitors have their own roles anyway, but not for 24 hour backup all the time. You consider different systems of storage, Supercapacitor solution band batteries, the storage com comes to from seconds to a couple of hours. But if you want to have really a large storage, which is usable for in, for in large sizes as well as long duration, going into days or weeks or months, then there are three systems which stand out. The first one is hydrogen, which is most versatile among these. The next one is the pop hydro. And third is the compressed air energy storage. Batteries, apart from their limitations of number of hours, they also depend upon the availability of minerals in sufficient quantity, which may not be possible all the time. This is a Diagram showing the energy densities and the specific power of different systems. Fuel cells or hydrogen system, the energy density is almost on par with IC engines or combustion engines. So weight per weight, fuel cell will match the IC engine densities. But the issue here is, if you consider the power, the fuel cell will have much lower power delivery compared to IC engines. So around a fuel cell, we use either the batteries or the ultra capacitors to get required power. So you get have the power, this combination of ultra capacitors or batteries with fuel cell will give you a system which is comparable to IC engines in range as well as power. One benefit with fuel cell is it is something like continuous battery. It's a continuous generator. So it keeps on working at the required capacity so long as you keep feeding fuel to it. When we depend on hydrogen, again reproduce, producing hydrogen by itself may not be fully green. When we started with hydrogen, the first thing that came in was the hydrogen from coal, which was again 
the carbon method by which carbon monoxide carbon dioxide was emitted in the atmosphere this subsequently gray hydrogen became into picture where they started producing from natural gas rather than from coal this was much better the co2 emissions are much less but still they are very much there then came the recently we started producing blue hydrogen where the essentially process is same as gray hydrogen but the carbon dioxide which is emitted is captured and stored it is stored under deep underground or it can it is used for industrial processes recently the cleanest method of green hydrogen started coming in that is by electrolysis of water mostly sea water using renewable energy you have solar panels or wind energy which go to make electrolysis of hydrogen from and produce green hydrogen that is this is a system which produce gives you the least possible pollution in the air now the cost wise as you go from gray to blue blue to green the things cost goes on increasing but with these system which are now coming up like netherlands they have shelf they have come up with a process where they produce blue hydrogen with a cost on par with gray hydrogen in india a number of companies are working towards production of green hydrogen and kerry has predicted that green hydrogen will start competing favorably with gray hydrogen in another 10 years time mnr in india is giving support to all the technologies which are coming up with hydrogen today world is producing a huge amount of hydrogen already mostly for industry refineries steel and some other things but the most all of them they use the process called smr that is steam methane reforming or autothermal reforming that using natural gas which is basically gray hydrogen the benefit with hydrogen is it can be created at any location and you can integrate with renewable energy plants very easily the people see the hydrogen today as such a huge possibility that a term hydrogen economy has started coming in now which is being used for where the hydrogen is used for delivering the energy as well as storing if you look at the world today spain is planning about 4 gigawatt of renewable energy plants specifically for electrolysis of sea water for hydrogen generation they have a huge capacity of 62 gigawatt anyway saudi arabia is planning 650 tons a day green hydrogen plants which is among the largest in the world today in india we are already seeing looking at the possibility of running the entire city transport on, on hydrogen including the railways another 10 years time blue hydrogen production will increase by about 6 times start right from 0.6 million tons today to about 3.5 million tons by 20 all over the world today there are about 50 green hydrogen plants under development with a renewable capacity with an energy capacity of 50 gigawatt and which will have a potential to produce about 4 million tons of hydrogen annually so huge quantity and people expect that by that time the cost of electrolyzers 
as well as the cost of renewable energy will further drop. And the green hydrogen will be even cheaper than grey hydrogen by that time. <clears throat> Today, the people have planned green hydrogen plants around the world to a good quantity of more than 60 gigawatts. The hydrogen being produced today is all grey hydrogen and whatever is produced by electrolysis is a very small amount. But in the 30 years time you will find the entire hydrogen will be either blue hydrogen or green hydrogen. Today we have electrolyzer capacity in the world about 253 megawatt. Next five years time, the planning is they will go to 3200 megawatt, an increase of over more than 12 times. And this will be used apart from, so one benefit with hydrogen is, you can use it for heat, you can use it for vehicles, you can use it for industry, you can use it for energy. So you have a lot of uh, varieties of applications. Apart from other hydrogen, emission also is getting a importance in energy. Like number of cities are using municipal solid waste, processing them and convert into electricity. They have, in California, they are converting municipal waste to hydrogen and this process does not involve any renewable energy as well. So you are not using any energy produced by renewables or any other source and converting solid waste into electricity, into, into hydrogen. The raw materials available for this process are absolutely free. In fact, the municipalities will pay you to remove the renewable waste. And because they, are not, they do not re rely on any renewable en en energies, they can operate 24 by 7. Another company in Can Lancaster, California, again, they have a huge plant where they can produce hydrogen cheaper than grey hydrogen, so green hydrogen and about 11,000 kg per day. Now these plants which convert municipal solid waste into methane and hydrogen, they even save you a huge amount of landfills and solve a lot of our garbage disposal costs. Sweden and Norway have long back invested very heavily into waste to energy plants and those plants are today running short of energy garbage from their own countries. The result is they are importing garbage from other countries, neighboring countries, to feed these plants. These plants are operating in a number of countries, whether it is Singapore, Malaysia, and so many places. And they use the waste to convert all waste into hydrogen and methane gas, or which can be used for fuel cells, engines, cooking, and several applications. So these things can imagine replace fossil fuels in a big way. Another possibility is going for livestock. Your dairies, poultry, and they have a vast potential in the form of biogas, methane, or hydrogen. In India, you have Buses running on biogas, they are playing big for this thing, even particularly in vehicles in the first place, and maybe tomorrow we go for higher applications. Australia is planning to produce hydrogen from solar energy and export it in a big way to as far as Japan and Korea through special shipping vessels. They have built up a vessel recently 
and since October 2020, they just started operating and they have a capacity of 2000 tons of compressed hydrogen cemented. Russia also is also looking into the export of hydrogen. They are today using for their domestic industry, but they are thinking of exporting 2 million tons by 2035. China is converting Wuhan into a hydrogen city where about 100 fueling stations or 5,000 fuel cell vehicles will be installed by 2025. It is expected that the hydrogen economy, hydrogen business worldwide will be around $700 billion by 2050. Liquefied hydrogen carrier with 20,000 cubic meters, so vast capacity. Now, why liquefied carrier? You consider this at 700 bars, hydrogen density is 42 kgs per cubic meter. Or when the temperature is at room temperature, they are 700 bars. It's a huge pressure. Whereas if you use a liquid hydrogen, it's at a normal temperature and it is normal pressure and cryogenic temperatures. The weight is much more, it's about 71 kg per cubic meter. Why people are going even importing this hydrogen in the first place? But Japan has got a big problem in using electric vehicles. They have used for parking problems, for charging. People prefer FCB. They say, we don't have a time to wait for the car to start. We charge for hours together. So <clears throat> hydrogen, you can charge it within five minutes time and you are on the go again. And not only that, the range of the vehicle is much longer compared to battery vehicles. The energy storage capacity by in terms of range for a vehicle and delivery, power delivery, is on par with gas turbines or IC engines. Today there are 14 countries, including India, they are moving to green hydrogen economy. They are, all of them are planning to produce green, green hydrogen in a good way, planning for them. And here you find there are three cars, Toyota Mirai, Hyundai Nexo, and River Simple, you can. <coughs> hydrogen yeah, hydrogen use in vehicles by way of convenience of convenience and range. The first thing that is refilling is just under five minutes, and the range is much longer than any battery vehicles. You can use hydrogen in FCV vehicles as well as in IC engines. FCVs are more getting more popular because of some of the advantages there, but IC vehicles are equally good in many places, and you have BMW and Mazda coming up with IC vehicles working on hydrogen. Hydrogen trains are running in a number of countries today. India is planning hydrogen power suburban train by 2021 and maybe in some time after that we may see long long distance trains as well running on hydrogen hydrogen blended cng buses are already working in delhi since last two months on a trial basis and <coughs> ntpc has launched green energy and fuel cell vehicle project in delhi and leh both buses as well as cars. There have been trials going on since last two months on hydrogen fuel cell prototype cars on the fuel cells 
developed by csr in india so you will have indigenous cars working on individual fuel, indigenous fuel cells the second mode of transport is water transport they have you know, they, only you please conclude please conclude yeah. yeah yes i'm just coming to that so you have a boats coming up which will take hydrogen from turbines you don't have to carry the fuel on the boats so it becomes easy no fish you don't have to buy the vessel you don't have to buy the buy the vehicle the fuel anyway same in vehicles even the planes are coming up and running on hydrogen so we'll see in six liters of hydrogen power vehicle already there and 400 km range is coming up now hydrogen can be the next oil as they say the oil will be replaced the economy will be centered around hydrogen and you, from 2015 you can see it's a huge capacity here, over here so and covering up the existing industries plus from here onwards it's all power and power thank you sir. thank you engineer desh pandey ji it was nice nice listening to the panelists regarding the importance of renewable energy for reducing greenhouse gas and so many datas which came up uh, now i would request host if we have any question answers we have question from the uh, audience I request host to for the questions from the audience. <clears throat> uh, we are getting some of the questions. One of those are. Then I will clap. Are these from a particular panelist or in general? uh it is coming from a various panelist we are getting various questions uh one is from uh mr uh amit kumar mittal he is saying that uh, india has a very long coastal line being a peninsula what is a uh, what is the potential here to produce power and what is the present state and policies as, as well as future plan it is a very uh, broad question so if it can be answered in a very brief manner i think you know desh pande can uh, answer to this question can you please repeat repeat the question yes sure india has a very long coastal line being a peninsula what is the potential here to produce power and what is the present status as well as policies now and the future plans also he is asking here from that means you are referring to producing power from hydrogen Oh, not hydrogen. The word that is person said we can use. So you have a big coastline, so you can have floating stations. You can have a wind offshore wind, uh, wind turbines. You also have wave, wave turbine thing coming up, and you can use even water currents for them. But that is not the, the other things are in process. But as right now, you have is a potential for wind energy. solar energy of offshore floating panels when it comes to hydrogen you are already working on the production of hydrogen using rich renewable energies so when you have offshore renewable uh, wind power you can utilize that to produce hydrogen and use it for different purposes so you have a producer uh, hydrogen production as well as 
renewable agencies which can be directly transported to sea so to shore so the potential is quite huge that way hey manshu do we have any uh, planning plan for uh, producing hydropower from uh, ocean water hydropower from ocean water means not in the normal sense that is not possible but what you can do is you can you can definitely use there is a there is a system by which you can do that to store the energy what they do is they use pipes so the low tides and high tides within by which they can they store the uh, water during the high tide and when there is a low tide they re re reuse it to generate electricity there are some two three methods of methods of doing that Uh, in this line, we are getting another question from Engineer Kirit Tribedi, uh, who is from Gujarat. He is asking: Is there any prospect for tidal power generation in India? Uh, that is what I said. <laughs> you have a you have a possibility, and when you have a high tide, you can. store the head lift the water up and there are two ways of doing it one is during the high and low tides the second is use waves by using waves you can create compressed air and use that compressed air to generate the electricity so there is a system by which wave power is utilized to compress the air yeah one minute ka ओके सर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन व्हाट वी आर गेटिंग फॉर सलाउदीन ही इज आस्किंग इज एनी एनवायरमेंटल इंपैक्ट ऑन फ्लोटिंग सोलर पावर प्रोजेक्ट एज इट मे मिनिमाइजिंग डायरेक्ट सनलाइट टू वाटर बॉडी डू वी हैव एनी स्टडीज ऑन इंपैक्ट ऑन इकोलॉजिकल सिस्टम इन द वाटर बॉडीज Dr Rakesh do you have some something to say on it Can you please repeat the question Yes sir sure uh he is asking on the eco what is the ecological impact uh on the water bodies if we use a uh, floating solar power project or uh, floating solar power uh panels does it minimize the sunlight to the water body oh uh, one positive thing that i think is that see about it is it uh, re drastically reduces the evaporation from the water bodies so you have a uh, limited water supply the reservoir will last much longer there is one positive thing you have and that is the reason you are thinking of having the solar panels over the water canals it it reduces the quality of water oxygen contents of water are also reduced which is which is not good so the wind is always left you do not stop the wind it has it is high it has to go about with a certain gap in between क्वेश्चन which says why so many towns have been created globally 
to deal with one problem such as greenhouse gas emission or carbon footprint or sustainability or ozone depletion like that uh, he is saying that tons of carbon dioxide uh, okay he is saying basically any effort to converge on one term to work towards uh, the goal uh, to minimize carbon footprint or to uh, minimize the ozone depletion like that any any particular measure can be taken for this last got time the first thing is again it comes to the same thing that by way of thinking of reducing the greenhouse gases or the spms and cleaning the atmosphere and today it's a well known fact that the most of the pollution in the cities or in the world is transport is responsible for it or the power generation is responsible for it so if you convert power generation and the transport to green sources eliminate the greenhouse gas gases from this this to itself that will go a long way and the third is you have you are using today methane or gases or other things for other other industry as well Including your chemicals or so many other things, where hydrogen or methane are used. So if you can use even that, you can convert into green hydrogen. Your problems are gone down. The reason why concentrating mostly on power or energy generation and hydrogen. Uh, sir, we have another question regarding government policy. You have, we will have one question only now. Final question. Uh, it is regarding the government policy decision. Uh, do government of India or Rajasthan state government has any proposal to use sizable area in the desert of Rajasthan for solar power production? Uh, what is the details of the policy? Yes, there is there is a proposal from Santa government to produce 40,000 uh, 40,000 kilowatt. I think 40,000 kilowatt from Rajasthan only by the year 2022. So if someone has uh, data regarding that, may please answer. Uh, sir, uh, I'd like to add here. Uh, as I uh, uh, means shared in my slide, if only 7% of this uh, desert area is being utilized for solar power generation, then we have capability of 300 gigawatt solar power generation. Uh, regarding uh, policy, uh, various uh, state governments uh, are complying with the RPO, Renewable Pur Purchase Obligation, where the industries, uh, they are bound to replace uh, their energy consumption uh, by means of renewable energy sources, whether they can install energy sources at their own station or uh, they can install an energy st storage and generation storage uh, outside uh, their facility. So these are the uh, policies for industry so that uh, they are uh, contributing in renewable energy generation. Engineer Imam Chu has emphasized much on solar. Do you have any data for this? You are muted. Please unmute him. Mr. Imam Chu. Mr. Sir, kindly unmute yourself. Uh, now it is okay. Sir, uh, every state government has their own uh, solar policy and it is uh, available with site. Uh, different, different, uh, their uh, issues are there. Uh, they, they have defined what are the um, rate and all that, everything is available there. If one wants, they can, uh, in Rajasthan particularly, they are demanding two, uh, two lakhs per megawatt uh, charging, uh, two lakhs per megawatt for development of the land. 
Mm-hmm. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Now we have uh, Professor Swaru Bhumi, Chairman Committee for Advancement and Technology and Engineering from IEI, for his uh, concluding address. Do we have Professor Bhumi? Professor Bhumik is there. Please unmute him if sir, he is muted. Uh, sir, Prof, uh, Professor Bhumik is not present, so we can uh, proceed with the further proceeding. Okay. Now I would request uh, our honorary secretary of IEI Faridabad Local Center for vote of thanks. Mm-hmm. 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 Am I audible? Yes, yes sir. sir. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, you are audible. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Please continue, sir. You are audible. Please continue. Good evening, everyone. As all good things come to an end in life, so is the webinar. Respected President, Engineer Narendra Singh, Chairman ELDB Dr. P. Rajamani, Chairman of the Committee for the Advancement of Technology and Engineering, Professor Sapna Bhumik, Chairman, Director Sin Gupta, Chairman, uh, Engineer Sundeep Handa of IE Center, Frida Local Center, our distinguished speakers, my fellow FLCC committee members, and all the audience present. On behalf of the Institution of Engineers, Frida Local Center, I take the opportunity to propose a vote of thanks to those who have directly or indirectly contributed to this webinar on the role of renewable energy for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. I am thankful to I headquarter team especially to Madam Aparna Datta for your kind support, suggestions, guidance given to us from time and time and when required. My sincere thanks to all speakers, Mr. Ankur Mittal, Dr. Rakesh Jain, Mr. Hamanshu Saha, Mr. R.P. Deshpande for their efforts towards the excellent coverage on the theme and sharing experience with us. I extend a really hearty vote of thanks to our President, Engineer Narendra Singh, and Chairman ELDB, Dr. Rajamani, who spared time from their Business schedule to grace the occasion. Today we had an opportunity to hear you, hear your thoughts, and this will surely be going to encourage in our future events. My special thanks to the event moderator, Mr. Pradeep Malla, for the support and making the event the sounding success. I thank the honorable IE members and the participants who have blessed with the presence and took valuable time of their busy schedule. I am sure that you are feeling enriched with the knowledge of the completion of this event. In the end, I would like to conclude that renewable energy is an essential part of our strategy of decarbonization, decentralization, as well as, uh, as digitization of energy. The nation that leads to renewable energy will be the nation that leads to the world. With these war words and with the kind message, we move to the end of the two days webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you to all. And hope to see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good night. 
Okay.